All right. So let's go back over here to Grasshopper now and take a look at how we can use this component. Now, over here in the uh, PowerPoint, you can see that in the slide really that development, the idea of breaking it down, the component into a quadrant using either the mirroring in this case or the polar array as a means to begin to uh, develop the geometry. Now, again, to facilitate the transformation or the morphing of this component, we're actually going to rely on something really uh, uh, fundamental to surfaces, which is the, the construct of the surface, the two-dimensional parameter space um, through which it's formed. Uh, now, this is a nerves, type of nerves geometry uh, defined by, again, a two-dimensional parameter space. And because of that, the, the space of the surface, here you can see a, a kind of surface and its control points, uh, has two axes, um, U and V. And you can see with that control point uh, or control polygon cage on, uh, if you were to change any of these, these control points, it would you know, deform the surface. Now, the benefit of that is that if you were to deform the surface in any way, and you are using that surface as your reference space, or as your target space, rather, uh, the transformation of your component would have to update because the surface is the uh, kind of mediating uh, device or substrate which facilitates the transformation. Now, that type of transformation is, is unique. Um, you know, it's, it's not fully explicit um, as most parametric systems would be. Um, it's actually a, a type of variation which is called implicit. So the individual components um, conform to the behavior and logic of the system that it is applied to. And so that parametric behavior, the change, the transformation of that object is really derived from the system and not really the components. The component is something you can design, as we just did, but you have to be willing to allow that the change or the deformation of the component to actually come from something outside of it. And we'll see how that plays out. So, again, what we're going to do is take a look at how to take a surface, deform it, and allow that component, right, um, through the non-deformed surface here um, and through the deformed surface here, change based on, um, on the, the surface updating. And, again, that's a, called an implicit parametric behavior. So here in the top right, you can see that surface parameter space being U and V, uh, really being the, the kind of uh, backbone to the way that we're ultimately going to be able to achieve this. So that first type of morphing technique that we're going to look at is called surface morph. And again, what it allows us to do is morph geometry into a surface using that specific um, set of parameters that the surface is constructed by, which is called UV. Um, and W is, is one last thing that we'll look at. Ending up with um, something like this. Now, if, you, if you did the subdivision modeling webinar, you'll recognize this as the translation of our mesh component into a higher order um, topology, um, which is the subdivision model. All right. Now, the basic premise behind this technique is we have a component we need a reference, and then we need a target. The morphing components are all found under transform in a special subtab called morph. The first one we're going to look at is map to surface. Um, sorry, that's not right. Uh, surface morph. There we go. And if we take a look at the inputs of surface morph, we'll see that it asks, what geometry would you like to deform? It asks, what is the reference box that we will use to map from? What surface would we like to map onto? And then, what is the extent of the surface in U, V, and W? All right, well, what geometry do you think we're going to have going into this input? You can just send a little response to the, uh, the chat window. And any suggestion about what type of parameter to use, uh, 
would also uh, be a little helpful. Now we've been using uh, meshes, so we'll go ahead and say that the mesh container um, could be one option. But at the same time, we can also go ahead and make this a little bit more generic and use the uh, general geometry um, component, or rather parameters. So I want to group this. I like to use this little trick where I select the object and hit Control G. And I right click on the group and I'll call this my input component. I'm going to right click here and set one geometry. And you can see that this is now set inside of here. That's going to go right here into G. Now, this is going to be my morphed components. R. We need a reference box to map from. So what do you guys think would be an easy way to get a reference box? Yes, I, I see a couple of people suggesting that we try using a bounding box, and I think that's an excellent suggestion. So let's go ahead and go to Surface, Primitive, and get the bounding box from here. Now, we would like to um, take our component into here. But before we do, um, let's take a step back, um, because I'm sure that you're all familiar with um, doing the, uh, the bounding box like this. And let's go back to that transform menu and take a look under utility at this object called group. A group is a really cool object, because what it allows us to do is take, for instance, let's say I have this as a component. But then with that, I wanted to take, for instance, uh, let's say, a series of points. Now I want to take this, and I want to take all my points. Well, if we were to do that, and I went ahead and I'll just clear the values here. I'm going to select my points and my mesh. And I'm going to say set multiple geometries. You can see I have a list coming out of here now. The first being uh, the points and the last being um, the mesh. And if I wanted to transform that easily by morphing, it might actually be a little bit cumbersome and require um, a few back tricks that I might, uh, backflips that I might not want to have to go through. So I'm going to go ahead and use from here the group object. And if we take a look at a panel, we can see that here I have a collection of objects. We should all be pretty comfortable with that idea. But down here, I have a group. And if you notice the wire from my fancy wires, I have under display, draw fancy wires on. I can see that out of here, I now have a singular piece of data. What's really great about that is that on the tail end of our file, we can use something called ungroup. We'll just make a note of this to take our geometry back out into its groups once it's been transformed, uh, back out of the group uh, into its lists uh, once it's been transformed. So I like to do this, and um, I'm just going to take this guy right into here. I'll group this to my grouped component parts. and use this as the way to uh, facilitate uh, the, uh, the transformation. You can see here I have one box coming from there. So this is my reference box. Now that reference box 
goes here to reference box. But we're missing a couple of pieces to the, to the uh, definition, which is that we need to have a surface to map onto, and then we also need to have some information about how to map to the surface. Let me give myself a little bit of room here. 